Yo, what's good? Welcome back to another DIY video. In this one, we're gonna try to recreate the chalk web denim from the brand Civist. But before anything, I wanna give a shout out to Dorug on Discord. Thank you for suggesting these pants. Hopefully I did them justice, You'll have to see. Now, if you guys have any suggestions, join my Discord, send your suggestions over there. And if I end up making a video about it, of course, I'll give you a shout out in that YouTube video. Now, if you don't know how the pants look like, I put them on screen right now. My first impression when I saw them was, you know, they look kind of simple to make, but a lot of work. But as of me shooting this video, I finished the pants already. It was not that simple. So without any further ado, let's get into it. For once, I was able to find a nice pair of black faded jeans in a size 36 at the thrift store. I'd say about 90% of the time, most size 36 pants that I find there have a length of like 30 or below. My length is 33. So I was pretty happy when I found these pants, especially with how they look and how they fit. Now I plan to leave the hems open, which means that they'll be even longer by the end of this DIY, which is perfect since the reference pants are pretty baggy. Now the original width of the pant leg openings were 8 inches, which was too small for what the goal was. So we got to add a flare panel to the outseams to increase the width of the legs and to make them baggier. I decided to make the length of mine 22 inches from the bottom because I still wanted them to have a kind of hourglass silhouette and not just flare out all of a sudden really close to the bottom of the legs. The spare denim that I used was a good example of the majority of the bigger waist size pants that I find at the thrift store. They have a nice color and wear but they're just too short. But since these were going to be cut up anyways, they were perfect for its role. But I drew and cut out two flare panels that I thought were going to increase the width to what I had in mind. But after I sewed them in and tried them on, they weren't consuming my shoe enough but low-key i liked how they were sitting on my shoe but it got to be fixed for the video Now I didn't want to remove the flares that I already had sewn in and then cut out new ones because that would have been a waste of fabric. So I cut out two more flares to be added to the inseams of the pants this time. And I made them at the same length as the original two flares I already added in to further emphasize the hourglass shape. Hopefully. But when adding a flare to the inseam, you have to undo the entire thing and not just up to the length of the flare like the outseam because they're usually sewn with a flat felt seam. A key part in the overall design was to make the webbings as symmetrical as possible. Of course, it doesn't have to be perfect, but the difference shouldn't be too noticeable. So I clipped the inseams closed as if they were sewn together to draw the guidelines for where I plan to position the cutouts on both pant legs that have similar start and end points. Now to keep the continuity of the added flares, I used the same fabric I made them from and cut out long triangular strips to be used as the webbing panel design. To mimic the look of them from the reference pants, I plan to sew them down the middle and then figure out a way to keep the edges up so that when they fray they'll have like a 3d effect but for now i just cut out and pinned the panels in place using the guidelines i drew in the inner ends of each strip i wanted to keep from fraying so to prevent this i glued them down into position and then darning stitched them along the ends to secure them after darning i sewed a straight line down the middle of each panel to keep them in place for the back side, I turned the pants inside out and then clipped the inseam again to temporarily close up the pants and then flipped them back right side out so that I can mark where the inner ends of the panels on the back should be. Dang. This way they'll be even after officially sewing the inseam close. This should have been the last step after everything else was finished, but I really wanted to see how the raw edges would fray after throwing them in the dryer, so that's what I did. It didn't work out though how I envisioned, but the good news was that the raw frayed edges were giving off a trimmed look, which I think looks really cool. It still kind of matches the aesthetic of the reference pants, so my patience kind of worked out. The webbing on the bottom half of the pants looked like they were distressed into the denim, so with white chalk, I drew in the basic outline of the webbings that I'll distress in later. At first, I tried to draw them in as perfect as I could, but eventually realized that it'll look a lot better if it had some imperfections in it, like lines that didn't really connect with another in an adjacent space. I think a combination of a spiderweb design and a scratched up look would match the distressed look of the pants rather than complete symmetry. Now to draw in the distressings. This took a little bit of trial and error in how to hold the rotary tool and how to scrape the jeans. What creates the visible designs are the horizontal threads, which means that when distressing, the main goal is to keep the horizontal threads intact while removing the vertical threads in the design of the white chalk drawing. Now I've never been to one and I don't have any tattoos, but low key I kind of felt like a tattoo artist when I was distressing this, you know, trying to be precise with the drawing while being careful not to mess up the skin or fabric in my case. 
Everything was sewn in and distressed at this point. The last steps to do were to connect the ends of the line panels that met and add the finishing touches to the rest of the pants. Finally, the inseam can be sewn back up and we could throw them into the dryer to see the pants and the fraying in their final form. 